Hi guys and welcome back from Carly at the Herbothecary. Uh, really good to see you guys again. If you're new to the channel or like the videos, please show your support by hitting like and subscribe down below. It's that crazy time of year again here at the Herbothecary where we are harvesting the last of the season's goodies and preserving them all in various ways. Hi guys, so today we are out excuse the noisy neighbors, rescuing some of these hawthorn berries that separate us from the houses behind. As some of you know, I took a little hiatus from doing videos in the beginning of the year because my brother was in ICU for seven weeks. Um, he wasn't in a good way and it put a lot of strain on his overall health, but also really his heart. So, hawthorn, not only high in protein and calcium and vitamin C, wicked antioxidants that help rid the body of free radicals, um, it's heart medicine. It's been used for chest pain, congestive heart failure, um, it's been used to prevent it. It also, in my experience, helps sort out diarrhea and stomach pains. Now I can't get him to eat anything healthy, so it's not like he's gonna eat it in fruit leather, but he does like ketchup. So today we are going to be sneaky and we are going to make a rose, well, rose hip, probably rose hips actually. I did find some huge ones earlier. I might stick a few of them in, but we are going to be making a hawthorn ketchup. So I am just gonna go and, as you can see, there's hundreds of these things. So I'm gonna leave the ones at the top because I can't reach them. And also the birds absolutely feast on this in winter. It's one of the last food sources available for them. So we won't take them all. So I am just going to snip off some of these, pop them in my handy basket, and then I'll see you guys back in the kitchen for the Hawthorn and we'll sneak in some tomatoes as well because we've still got some in the garden but for my hawthorn ketchup recipe now i have made this for the kids and they absolutely love it so let's see if we can get him to eat it huh all right see you guys in the kitchen From the end of summer almost all the way through winter until the birds get them at least, these gorgeous little red apple-like berries can be seen with their five-lobed leaves, which is more pronounced in the older leaves or the bigger leaves than it is in the smaller ones. They appear to have a star at the base and they normally have one pip in the common hawthorn. Now it gets its name from these evil thorns. Luckily the young branches that I'm using don't seem to have many on them or at least they're soft but in those higher branches they are quite large and prickly. Now I am going to be adding some tomatoes to this recipe which I don't normally do but as he's trying it for the first time I'll see how that tastes and whether or not he likes it better. So we've got a few of my heirloom tomatoes here that are ready, some of the black ones. So I'll just chuck in half a dozen or so. I've got my big basket full of hawthorn and although the leaves are edible in spring they do get a bit bitter once the berries are out. So I am going to start the laborious task of removing all these berries from the stalks and giving them a good wash. Once they're all nice and clean, it's just time to weigh our berries. And in this case, with our tomatoes. When I'm just using the hawthorn berries as they don't contain much juice in them, I normally use a 500 grams of hawthorn to make 150 mils. With that, I use 300 mils of water and 300 mils of apple cider vinegar. But because those tomatoes are way juicier than the hawthorn, I'm using less quantity of plant matter this time. So I've got 378 grams of the hawthorn and the tomatoes. And that works out at 75, well, 75.6% of um, 
500. So I am going to adjust those ratios for the water and the apple cider vinegar as well. So that's 300 mils times 0.75 and that gives us 225 mils. So into our pot with our 378 grams of hawthorn and tomatoes, our 225 mils of clean water, I am using bottled water, our 225 mils of apple cider vinegar, you can use any vinegar that you like, obviously if you do want more ketchup, you can just double these quantities, it's entirely up to you. And then we are just going to let that simmer for about half an hour until all those berries are nice and soft. And the water content is reduced by about 25%. As you can see, now they're all nice and soft and there seems to be very little liquid in there. So now all we need to do is sieve it through a fine mesh sieve as you do not want to get any of those seeds in there. The berry might be edible, but those seeds are not. Now this can take a while. Um, it is another laborious task. However, if you find that it is starting to slow down, you can pour some of the liquid through. It can speed it up. However, I just keep at it, scraping the bottom of the sieve frequently to get all those juices in. I help makes it go quicker. So once you feel like your spatula has done all the work that it can and got all those juices out, I then get my hands in and give it a good squeeze just to make sure that there's no juices left in there. Then back into the pot with our beautiful sauce. This actually is a really nice consistency already. However, I do like to flavor mine a little bit. So, so this bit is all about your personal preference. I'm going to add about a teaspoon of honey as it is quite tart and I want to sweeten it up a little bit. Don't forget to taste as you go, just to get it right for you. I'm also going to add a, a dash of salt, I think, about half a teaspoon. I'm going to add some cayenne chili pepper, just a little bit to give it a bit of a kick, and some coarse ground black pepper. Give that all a good stir in. Make sure all that honey's in and all those spices are incorporated. One last taste test and that is absolutely gorgeous. So just time to bottle up and said this is a 150 ml jar. So I'm hoping that we can fill this with the adjusted ratios. It's a little thick to go through my funnel. It seems to be getting stuck. So I am going to abandon that idea and I'll just scoop it in instead and probably make a big mess. But it's okay, I'll have a good clean up afterwards and it looks like we are going to have just enough. I might actually stick some oven chips in and scoop around the bowl before I clean it just to use the rest of it up. And then as always, it's just time to label, date and refrigerate. And I found at home that it lasts at least a few months in the fridge, although I am hoping this won't last him that long. We had some leftover hawthorn berries and as I was planning to make some apple fruit leather with all of those leftover apples that we have, I decided that I would add the berries in with that. So I've just got the smallest amount, I think it's about 100 mils of water, some apple cider vinegar, about 30 mils of that, and I'm just chucking those apples in, chucking the hawthorn berries on top, and I'm going to allow that to simmer until it's all nice and soft. Then again, press that through a sieve like we did earlier, and then onto a baking sheet, and as I said in my previous video, when it comes to drying fruit, I like to do it in the oven on the lowest heat because we still, at this time of year, have some fruit flies about. So remember, give it a good press and get as much out as you possibly can. I hope you guys gave the Hawthorn ketchup recipe a go. Let me know what you added to yours. I've known people to add cinnamon, some to even add cloves. 
at this one or this one I'm making for him the straight up hawthorn leather or hawthorn ketchup rather I make for the girls when I make it for myself I add it to some chunky apple sauce with chilies as I like it more like a fruity chutney but again thank you guys and please comment down below I do enjoy reading your comments I love getting back to you our very exciting news here at the Herbothecary. Most of you know, two weeks ago we released our first ebook, Raiding Nature's Medicine Chest. Eight plant based recipes that every medicine chest is missing. It includes an antifungal, a bites and stings cream, a sleep aid, a pain balm, so many wonderful recipes that we've used here in our house for the last 10 years. I am currently working on the next edition, which is Raiding Nature's Pantry, but this copy can be ordered either in Word or PDF by either emailing us at the Herbothecary Natural Health at gmail.com or by visiting us on our Facebook page, which is Natural Health at Home at the Herbothecary, and I will put links in the description box below. Thank you guys again for all your support. Again, everyone who's already ordered their copy and the wonderful feedback. We really appreciate it. You encourage and enable us to keep putting out more content and we really, really enjoy sharing what we've learned over the last 10 years with you. Again, thank you guys for coming back to the Herbothecary. It was great to see you again. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and hopefully I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.